Welcome, friends, and gather around the proverbial fireplace to hear the tale of the crazy, demented fox and your friendly neighborhood camping alien. This true account takes place at Dinosaur Valley State Park. It was my first solo camp. I had camped one time before with my friend Gordon on the way back from picking up the camper in Florida. Dinosaur Valley. I'll put links to the original episodes below. This is a place where you can travel millions of years back in time and see actual dinosaur prints in the riverbed of the Paluxy River, a tributary of the Brazos River. This is a fantastic place to camp for people who love dinosaurs, like me. The story takes place on February 4th of last year, a Thursday. It was my last day in the camp and I was packing up. It was still a few hours before I had to leave and I decided to make myself some oatmeal on my gas stove. And in the distance, I saw something in the woods staring at me. A fox. His adorable exterior, belying his true nature, something catawampus and twisted. There he is. Oh, sure. He's tiny. He couldn't possibly take down and eat a large six foot three alien. What's he eating? What is he eating? There's something in his mouth, something that doesn't quite agree with him. And here's where things started to get weird. The fox started walking backwards. He seemed in distress, possessed. And then he started to move toward me before he ran off. Maybe that was the last I'd see of Mr. Fox. I was hoping he would just move on. But just two minutes later, as I was making my breakfast, there he was. I picked up some metal, a tire iron, and the crank tool for the jack and clang them together to make some noise. I'm uh, warming water for oatmeal. Our fox has no interest in leaving. He's quite curious. Ah, oh, birds. Two different types of birds. Back to fox, back to birds. Fox, birds, fox. The idyllic beauty of nature juxtaposed to the deranged, malevolent fox just staring at me in the distance, biding his time. About 15 minutes later, after I'd had my oatmeal, the loony fox had run through the campsite and flanked me from the other side. Now even closer, his mad eyes piercing at my very soul. You'll make a mistake. I know it. You'll make a mistake. And yet, I had a job to do. My noon departure time was approaching. I had to break down my camp. Imagine if that guy was a bear or a bobcat. I would be doing this post from inside my vehicle. I'm wondering if this guy is ill. He's doing the backwards walk a bunch of times. He's got something coming from his mouth.
Please excuse the camera work, my friends. I was inspired by a movie I saw recently called The Blair Witch Project. under my vehicle. Hopefully he's not a rabbit. Get out of here! Come on, get out of here! Despite all my clanging and shooing noises, Mr. Mad Fox had reached his destination, which was, of course, to be under my vehicle. Well played, Mr. Fox the one place where he could keep an eye on me, but I could not see him. A at least, not easily. Only if I got down on my knees and, you know, the concrete, the pebbles, tender knees. The ground is very far down. But his mission was clear, obviously, to keep me paranoid while I was breaking down camp. Keep me thinking about him nipping at my ankles and giving me his rabies. Honestly, I did feel bad for Mr. Fox. Obviously, he was off. And I did tell the park ranger about him as I was leaving. Hopefully, he's okay. Okay, let's just check over the campsite. Uh, clean, clean. That wire hanger was there before, so that was helpful to me. I'm gonna leave it. Fox, check, under the driver's side seat, check. Uh, Clean, clean, clean. Took the stabilizers and back up. My anti-fox noise tool. <clears throat> I continued with my work to get the camper ready for travel. This was my first solo, so I wanted to make sure I didn't forget anything. But bonkers McFurry face was making it really difficult to remember all my tasks. Hopefully when I turn the engine on and rev it a little bit, he'll get the idea. I think I've got everything taken care of. I feel a little frazzled just because of the fox thing. Like I haven't been paying attention close enough, but uh, doesn't mean I can't look over things one more time. Fox, you're gonna have to move. Not moving. All right, I hate to do this. Did not make a bit of difference. <clears throat> it does not make a bit of difference. All right. We're just climbing in the car and taking off. <clears throat> okay, Mr. Fox, please move. Please move. There it goes. All right, good. Good, 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 good. We didn't run over Mr. Fox. Okay, he's alive. I think maybe I should tell the rangers just in case. He's acting weird. I mean, I don't know. I'm not an outdoors guy, but uh, I've seen I've seen uh, nature shows. He wasn't right in the head. So I'm, I'm taking off. I just uh, told the guys at the ranger station. They said the they informed the game warden and the fox had been taken care of. They were already aware of it. 
but I just saw him five minutes ago. So, <laughs> uh, taking care of, I guess they mean future tense. Okay. Thankfully, I made it out of that harrowing ordeal in one piece. I may have exaggerated the danger of the fox just a little, but I was worried about him nipping at my ankles and perhaps giving me some disease. Anyway, thanks for joining my story today, humans and Gugugians. Jakarta Priyij. And I will see you next week. By the way, very quickly, if you like the show, consider Buy Me A Coffee to help support the show. Buy Me A Coffee is a great way for creators and artists to accept one-time support or membership ongoing from their fans for the price of a coffee. Go to buymeacoffee.com slash brainfire to help the show. Thank you. Get out of here to where the world